Welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Aaron Porras, and coming up in today's newscast, over 200 Israelis now have coronavirus, leading to yet another stricter update to isolation directives. Prime Minister Netanyahu offers to form an emergency unity government with the center and left-wing parties. And later, we'll take a look at some of the surprising and even silly trends that have taken form during quarantine. Now, as the panic over the coronavirus pandemic spreads across the world here in Israel, the health ministry has just announced new regulations that are leading to a partial shutdown of the Israeli economy. And ILTV's Natasha Kirchuk is joining us live from the center of Tel Aviv with some of the details. Hi, Aaron. So as of now, 200 people have been diagnosed with the coronavirus in Israel, two of which remain in serious condition. And this latest uptick in cases comes as the government has just announced new restrictive measures to curb the spread of this disease. Supermarkets and pharmacies will remain open to the public, but all places of leisure have shut down as of this morning. And you can really feel a difference in the mood on the streets. You know, the mood is absolutely changing. Here in Tel Aviv, I'm right near the Shuka Carmel. This is one of Israel's top tourist destinations. And it's practically empty compared to what it's usually like on the typical day. Starting this morning, malls, restaurants, and dining rooms will be shuttered, aside from those that provide takeout. So if there's a local business that you order takeout from, that may still be available. Bars, pubs, and dance clubs will also be closed along with gyms, pools, water and amusement parks, zoos, and petting zoos. Bathhouses and ritual baths will also be shuttered along with beauty and massage salons, event and conference venues, public boats and cable cars, and heritage sites. The Israeli Health Ministry has also announced a new directive that bans gatherings of more than 10 people in a given space. All schools, universities, daycare centers, kindergartens, and after-school programs are also going to be shut down starting today. The health ministry is also advising Israelis to refrain from traveling in a car in groups larger than two and recommending that people avoid using public transportation as much as possible. In Tel Aviv, people are advised not to go to the beach where there will be no lifeguard services. Municipal workers will continue to provide sanitation and security services, however. Right now, nearly 40,000 Israelis are believed to be in home quarantine for fear of exposure to the virus. And so far, health officials have conducted over 6,800 coronavirus tests nationwide. Over 150,000 cases of the disease have been diagnosed across the world with over 5,700 deaths. In Israel, the capacity for coronavirus tests is expected to triple to 2,000 per day. And now joining us via Skype to discuss the newest Israeli quarantine and isolation directives, we have the head of international relations with the Israeli Ministry of Health, Dr. Asher Shalmon. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, can you one more time really quickly outline the latest health ministry guidelines? Good afternoon. So as you all know, yesterday evening the government had published a set of new orders and we are working now to process mm-hmm. them and to publish uh, a detailed set of instruction how to behave. In general, what we are doing is a social dissociation, not in order to shut down the country, but rather to uh, to, to diminish as much as possible uh, contacts in the sense that people will be infected by the virus. Now, it includes uh, asking people not to gather in groups of above 10 people, include uh, uh, to diminish uh, public transportation services, and when you use public transportation to... Uh, to not to allow people to squeeze in into sure. a yeah. cluster. To be seated two meters apart from everybody and away from the driver. Yeah? Mm, as well. But uh, even there, I think we're limited to 20 or 30 people a bus. Wow. And uh, we are uh, trying to convince most employers to employ as many as their employees at home and ask them to work from home. Uh, we at the same time have crucial services running all over the country and people that are involved in crucial services must continue on uh, uh, appearing to work and we are looking for solution for children. As much as talking about young children, uh, we did close all education, uh, the all education system, including kindergarten, nurseries, uh, primary school, etc. 
Uh, that is a big so, burden for the whole of the country, but it's necessary. All right, well, so what, what are some of the best ways for the elderly and people with chronic illnesses, you know, those who are most at risk of coronavirus, uh, uh, from the coronavirus, uh, to look after themselves? Should they enter isolation preemptively as a precaution, and if so, for how long? So it's not isolation, but we did mention, and that was already last week, that people above the age of 60 and people with underlying uh, medical conditions should consider uh, dis diminishing even further the contacts, meaning don't really leave home un unless you must go to, you know, to the clinic or to get food okay. product or so. Avoid gathering, avoid exposures. Uh, we are asking people not to visit the uh, uh, parents' houses and hospitals uh, yeah. for unnecessary visits. So the basic idea is that these people, uh, when they do uh, catch the virus, they would uh, they have a much higher chance of developing a serious form of the disease, and the risk of dying from it is higher than the rest of the population. So, ha so right now, the number of coronavirus patients in Israel has hit 200. Is this a real number? Do you, do you believe, or is this just the most updated number that we have officially? How much more patients, do, how, how many more patients do you think that we'll have, and how soon? We don't know. Uh, we, we believe that we have some more patients in the community which were uh, not diagnosed yet due to the fact that maybe they are asymptomatic, or rather they did not approach uh, our services. We can still say that m almost all of our positive cases we could trace down exactly whether they came from a broad with a virus or whether they had a contact with a positive patient. We have only two or three cases where uh, this link is not established, meaning that we may have coronavirus mm -hmm. out in the community, but still not in huge numbers. All right, and so my final question, unfortunately we're running out of time, but uh, mm -hmm. what happens if there is a full shutdown? Uh, how, how might that look like, and is that on the horizon? I hope we would not get to a full shutdown. This country must continue on functioning, and we have crucial services that must continue on functioning. We may uh, tighten a bit the rules and, and make the current shutdown to be even more tough, but I don't think we'll get a total closure. Uh, and we have to understand it's not a week or two. It's quite a long process, and, but we do hope when the spring will come in and the infectious curve would be flattened down, we would see a, an improvement. And you know, when we'll know when we have an improvement, when we'll have more uh, recovered cases and new infection. All right, Dr. Shimon, thank you so much for joining us. Now, as regulations become even more strict surrounding the coronavirus, the Israeli Finance Ministry is now predicting that the partial shutdown of the country beginning today will cost the economy an estimated $3 billion over the course of the next six weeks. And the ministry's chief economist says that the shutdown will cost Israel $1.2 billion, even if it only lasts for three weeks. According to the reports, the finance ministry has been strongly opposed to a full shutdown, arguing that it's unrealistic to think that the coronavirus can be completely eradicated and that the outbreak should be managed in a way that does not cause economic collapse. The director of Israel's tax authority will also be holding a meeting today to discuss possible ways to postpone payments from businesses. Retail stores are responding quickly to the new regulations, with Israel's largest fashion company Castro closing all 454 of its stores and placing 6,000 employees on leave. Zara will likewise also be closing all of its shops in Israel. The construction industry in Israel, though, is expected to continue business as usual, since new directives only forbid 10 people from working together indoors, but not outside. The industry largely depends on Palestinian workers from the West Bank, but the Israeli government is working on a solution for having workers under the age of 55 in Israel in the event of a border closure. The construction industry is expected to receive around 1,000 workers from China and 800 from Ukraine in the coming weeks as well, all of whom will need to remain in quarantine for 14 days in their home countries before traveling to Israel, and then 14 days in quarantine in Israel before being able to work. And finally, Israeli banks have given construction businesses around $24 billion in credit, so a collapse of the construction industry could threaten the whole banking system. In related news, it might be easy to overlook sometimes, but children are also being heavily affected by the novel and deadly coronavirus. So how do you calm and reassure your kids while keeping them updated and in line with all of the news? Well, joining us with some answers is parenting coach with the Adler Institute, Barbara Halkavi. Thank you so much for being with us, Barbara. Now, how can parents explain to their children that we are in a state of emergency, but also keep them calm, soothe them, and not put unnecessary stress on them? So first of all, I strongly uh, advise to uh, speak very truthfully to the kids, to tell them, 
in an age-appropriate way uh, what is going on. Um, allow them to ask a lot of questions because it's a way to ventilate and uh, to express feelings, uh, talk with each and every child if we have more than one child separately and, and ask them, let them ask a lot of questions. Um, we should not forget that we are their role models. They are looking at us uh, and, and, and watching us and see if we are stressed, if, uh, if we are anxious. So um, it's better to send out a message that things are under control and we are calm and answer all of their questions very uh, truthfully. All right, so how can, how can we maybe maintain a normal daily routine for the kids uh, to whatever extent possible? Is, is it allowed maybe to let them see more television, uh, spend more screen time, et cetera? For sure, for sure. First of all, uh, it, those are uncertain times and we cannot keep all the rules and the regular rules and boundaries. Yet uh, in those uncert uncertain times, we need to give them some certainty. So a way of doing that and of empowering them and giving them certainty is to make a regular schedule, uh, day schedule, time schedule with regular times. Uh, waking up in the morning at the regular time, getting out of your pajamas, dressing up, not staying in the pajamas. Well, treating it like a regular day. Uh, and just uh, having some time, some learning time, some play time, some screen time, eating uh, meals at a regular time. And I strongly suggest also having some outside time, some mm -hmm. physical activity, maybe doing some long walks, uh, bicycle mm -hmm. uh, rides, uh, even if you have to stay inside and put some uh, YouTube, some physical activity, yoga, dancing, and move move around, this uh, evaporates the stress, the anxiety. It's good for us. It's good for the for the children. And and what about you know? Because schools are basically closed, ba essentially for the time being. So, real quick, you know, is there maybe some sort of educational uh, you know things that that parents should be doing? Of course, of course. First of all, uh, the teachers uh, in Israel are, uh, are trained at giving uh, long distance uh, learning. So there's a whole program in all the Israeli schools of uh, distance learning. But I also suggest, and, and I've seen teachers uh, do that, uh, opening WhatsApp groups with the, with the children to not forget the emotional side and the connection with the children and with the classmates. All right, well, so it seems like there are a lot of things that we can do for our kids. Uh, keep them somewhat calm amidst this virus. Everybody stay healthy out there. Barbara, thank you so much. Now, amidst the near daily updates to coronavirus regulations, politicians in the newly minted 23rd Knesset are still trying to put together a government. Knesset Speaker Yuli Edelstein has announced that in spite of the spreading pandemic, the 23rd Knesset will still be inaugurated Monday, and President Reuven Rivlin will likewise begin meeting with the various parties to get recommendations for a potential prime minister, while Prime Minister Netanyahu is playing the field by focusing on preparing for fourth elections while also pushing for majority coalition to prevent another vote. But rather than trying to poach from the center-left parties, the premier is now advocating for a national unity government partnered with all the center-left parties. He says he's calling on his colleagues Benny Gantz, Avigdor Lieberman, and Amir Peretz to join him, form a coalition, and take on the emergencies pressing the nation. And the offer includes two options. The first is a six-month emergency government focused on addressing the coronavirus and passing an updated budget. And at the end of the six months, the country would return to our current situation. Then the second option is a fully-fledged four-year rotational government in which Netanyahu would serve for the first two years as prime minister, followed by Benny Gantz for the latter two. The joint Arab list, however, was not invited. So will Gantz take Netanyahu's offer? Well, as of now, maybe he won't need to. To prevent fourth elections, both the joint list and Avigdor Lieberman have now officially recommended Benny Gantz for prime minister in meetings with President Rivlin, meaning that a center-left minority government, propped up by majority Arab parties from the outside, could be on the horizon for the first time in Israel's history. At the very least, Benny Gantz will likely receive the first mandate from President Rivlin to try and form such a coalition. What still remains to be seen, however, is whether or not the Knesset would reject such a government with a vote of no confidence. Now finally, as for Prime Minister Netanyahu's pending trial, it was set for March 17th, but amidst the new coronavirus guidelines, it has been delayed until May 24th. Moving on, the government is doing everything possible to prevent the coronavirus pandemic from wreaking any more havoc than it already has. But in light of the new government restrictions and actions, many Israelis are wondering just how ethical the government's plans really are. Now, 
So the country's at war, so to speak. Does that mean that Netanyahu can use wartime powers? Well, it's starting to look that way as the prime minister is greenlighting the use of military intelligence and anti-terror tracking technology to digitally monitor coronavirus patients without their permission. The justice ministry just needs to sign off now. But Netanyahu argues that with this technology, we can better track patients as well as with whom they've made contact. And the Sheen Bait Security Service stresses that there is no intention of using these capabilities to enforce or monitor quarantine instructions. However, Netanyahu does go on to admit that this will certainly infringe on personal privacy, and many activists across the country are understandably concerned. <laughs> אני קיבלתי פנייה ממשרד הבריאות, היא לא פשוטה. אמצעים דיגיטליים שבידינו, השתמשנו בהם למאבק בטרור. אני נמנעתי עד היום, בכל השנים שהייתי ראש ממשלה, להפעיל את האמצעים האלה בתוך הציבור האזרחי, אבל אין ברירה. אנחנו נאבקים עכשיו במלחמה שהיא מחייבת אותנו לנקוט באמצעים מיוחדים. Meanwhile, Israeli police and health ministry officials are also upping their efforts to ensure compliance with the new regulations, like preventing gatherings and investigating or even arresting alleged quarantine breakers. The IDF, on the other hand, is scaling back its numbers as much as possible, with military brass ordering their branches to assess what the minimum number of soldiers necessary to function is. Now, in related news, nobody wants to get in trouble with the government because of this virus, and breaking quarantine can result in both fines and or jail time. So the good news is that there are a number of new ways to monitor ourselves and maintain our own compliance as much as humanly possible. As of now, even if you're sick, and even if you think it's with the coronavirus, do not rush to go to the emergency room. This is the new directive handed down to Israelis as of this weekend by Magen David Adom paramedics. Instead, Mada Paramedics will come to you using their new video chat services. The program has just launched pairing doctors, Mada Paramedics, and non-urgent care patients in a way that Magendavid Adom claims will reduce the number of ER visits by a third. Then for those who have yet to come in contact with the disease, don't worry, there's a new app for that too. Developed in cooperation with United Hatzalah Medical Services, the new app called Track Virus works by tracking users' locations and cross-checking their paths with those of confirmed coronavirus patients. And users in any sort of danger then get a notification that they may need to enter quarantine. But the app does not store user data outside of the device, and no identification is needed to download the app either. The bad news is that the app is only available on Android for now and does not work retroactively, so download Track Virus as soon as you possibly can. For those of you who are worried about prices skyrocketing in local grocery stores and pharmacies as people flood them, there is some good news. The economy minister has just announced that the price of hand sanitizer is not to exceed $2.70 per every 100 milliliters. The supermarkets Rami Levy, Shufersal, B, Yohananov, Yeinot Bitan, Victory, and Superfarm will all be selling hand sanitizer for this new price. And some stores may also be limiting the number of hand sanitizers that can be bought at a time and others will be selling 500 milliliter bottles for $5.40 or less. Producers of the product are stressing that there will not be a shortage of sanitizer and that even though some stores have run out, shelves will be replenished in the coming days. Now we're seeing more and more people wearing face masks on the street to avoid breathing airborne coronavirus particles, but as we've learned, face masks often are not effective at all. Now a new Israeli developed face mask may soon be available to the public though, and it could change the game completely. Today, even N95 masks cannot fully block tiny coronavirus particles, and they definitely can't kill them. And some even stay on the mask's surface and pose a hazard when being handled and thrown away. Plus, face masks don't cover your eyes, which provide another route for the virus to enter the body. The new Israeli-developed Viri mask, protective ocular respirator, however, offers what is believed to be a safer alternative. It's strapped around the head, and it covers not only the mouth and nose with a filtering mechanism, but also the eyes with a see-through visor. And it can be washed and reused, and the filters must be replaced after about 12 hours of use. Now, the patent-pending Viri mask isn't available to the public yet, but it should go through testing by mid-April, and it's expected to cost around $50 once it's on the market. An Israeli physician, Dr. Noam Gavrieli, is behind the device, which he says could provide a way out of isolation for many, since it can be safely used to go to work, to drive, and even to talk. So once government approved, Dr. Gavrieli is hoping to produce up to 100,000 units per day within just four months. 
Now on a lighter note, with all the seriousness of coronavirus, people still need an outlet and a reason to laugh. So here with some of the amazing, odd, and even funny things to have come from this crisis is ILTV's Nittany Manson. Nittany, I'm so excited for this. Hi, what do we Aaron. got? Okay, so this whole situation has been stressful and intense and serious. To say but, the least, right? To say the least. But we need to laugh. Um, so a few things that have been happening, um, one specifically here in Israel, people have been posting online for Corona quarantine buddies. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've seen this actually on like certain Facebook groups. It is. It's Facebook groups. People are posting saying, um, who wants to be my quarantine buddy? There's a few that are actually, I just have to read some of these. Um, one guy actually wrote, in the days of zombie apocalypse, we have to stick together. Who of you girls want to join me for an unforgettable 14 day quarantine? It's, it sounds a little <laughs> creepy, got to be honest. It's a little creepy. Well, he's, he's offering yoga meditation, drinking organic chi Chinese tea, <laughs> uh, vegan barbecues, and sunbathing naked. So, I don't know. I'm in it's, you. Know, he, had me, he had me, and then, <laughs> and then I dropped off again. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. All right, another what's one, next? Yeah. Another one. Somebody posted, posting for a hot male friend. And then oh, he wrote, wow. no, really. <laughs> Looking for a woman to also quarantine who wants to spend the time together. You have to be really cool. I wonder if there were any women who made similar posts like this. It'd be you know, I didn't see any. I didn't see any? <laughs> I did not. This is, all right, well, what's next? Okay, no. next. So people are always making Spotify playlists that you can go on and listen to music and follow along, whatever. Yeah. So there's a playlist for the quarantine, and I just have to list some of these names. They're just hilarious. Toxic by Britney Spears, Mask Off by Future, Unwell, Made in China, Nowhere to Go, Bad Disease, Cover Your Mouth, and these, of course, these are all names of these songs. These are all names of songs. Amazing. And of course, Can't Touch This by MC Hammer. Well, yeah. <laughs> that needs to be on pretty much any playlist any right now. Any quarantine now. playlist. All right. So last but not least, though, last because this is, I mean, this is amazing. And this is not, there are a lot of, a lot of I mean, playlists there's, like this. There's a ton. This was just one that I found by putting in quarantine, oh, you know. Gosh. All right. Um, last but not so least. So last but not least, people are taking this whole toilet paper it's cr lines are out the door out in some the places. Door. Yeah. Toilet paper is gone. People can't find it in the States here. It's crazy. But some people are doing some funny videos. Um, so let's take a look at one. All right. <laughs> did he just tip that man he, he in did, toilet paper? He did not tip him. He paid for his coffee with it toilet paper. It looked like he slipped him a little something <laughs> no, in, the, in the breast pocket maybe there. Maybe he gave a little more. And then I have one more video. Let's right. take a look. Okay. I love, the, I love the Marvel music in the background because he is taking one for the team right the there. poor puppy. That is a poor dog. All right, Nini, I, I hope that other people have their sense of humor. Thank you for reminding us that, that we can have humor in times like this as My well. My pleasure. Nini, thank you so much. God. All right, let's take a look at the weather forecast. Tonight we start the week with mostly clear skies and a cool minimum temperature of roughly 53 or 12 degrees Celsius. Then tomorrow should be partly cloudy and warm with highs around 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 Celsius. And now before we go, let's take a look at what's going viral in Israel on tubing. Ways to stay entertained. So as you can see, we got ways to stay entertained when in quarantine. Oh, <laughs> we have a lot. There's a lot of creative kind of uh, uh, solutions, actually. Oh wow, Expert there's all sorts of tricks there. To the end, over 46 n, and you see how I canceled those out. Yep. Yep. No? Kids, kids want the vacation here. They don't want to spend. They don't want to spend their their coronavirus vacation learning normal kid stuff. But that is it for today's news. Today's exchange rate is 3.67 shekels to the American dollar. For more news from ILTV, please like ILTV on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube and Roku TV pages. I'm Aaron Porras. Thank you so much for watching.